What is up, Copy Squad? It is Tuesday, July 16th, and today we're going to do a sales letter breakdown. What we're going to do today is a Copy Squad promo. This one was written by myself and co-written by Zan. He did the offer section, and I did the promo copy. This is going to be for our internal trend jacking product, which we are running cold traffic to. It's hitting most industry benchmarks, most industry benchmarks for external media. And we're seeing some early signs of like open success that it could go even higher. I, I say that because this is not a million dollar promo as we typically review. However, it's a promo that found some traction going to cold traffic like on Facebook, which I feel like a lot of people run entire businesses on Facebook and I think is like turning steadily into just an expensive graveyard. So I thought it was worth doing a breakdown and I know you guys would like to see more stuff that I personally wrote so that you can just have a little bit closer glimpse into how I do stuff. So I thought it was just time to show you something like that. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and we're gonna dive right into this. This can be a little bit more like a classic sort of sales letter breakdown because we're gonna be doing markup here on the sales page and I'm gonna be talking you through it. So let me do, let's actually start with the four U's. Four U's and they are unique, useful, urgent, ultra specific. I'm not sure where this comes from. My understanding is, I think the first person I heard it from was Mark Ford. Oh, okay, cool. So let's talk about the headline and the different areas of the headline. We have an eyebrow. This looks like one big headline, but it's not. There's an eyebrow, some deck copy, a main headline, and then a quote box. So something that I sort of recommend is four pieces to the headline. And I think each piece, if possible, you shouldn't be making your promise as much as possible. It should be immediate and obvious and beneficial to the reader. So what we've got here, this order is important, unique, and then useful. The four use, unique, useful, urgent, ultra specific, Alex. So unique is more important than useful. I said it. It's more important that it be something new and different that they've never heard of before than it actually be useful. My evidence for this is basically that you could just tell someone I have a way to lose weight, right? That's useful. But if you can say like, you know, my muscle confusion system for losing weight, that's unique. So it's more important that it have an element of uniqueness. Internal trend jacking. So the thing about this is our mechanism, but it's our unique element. So internal trend jacking is our unique mechanism. It is the element of uniqueness, but it also has something that is relevant or recognizable in the name in trend jacking that people have heard of that before. They sort of have an idea of what that is. But internal trend jacking is just the slightest quirk or spin that makes it sort of eye catching. Like, ooh, what is that? I've talked about this way back. I would say it was like 2023 or 2022. I was doing the Nomi Prins and it was like America's new abnormal. And I said that abnormal, that slight little quirk is all it really takes. You don't have to like blow minds with your quirky cleverness. As a matter of fact, it's probably not so good. You probably will lose people for that. Internal trend jacking is just enough sort of quirkiness to be like, ooh, what's that? I recognize it, but I don't know what that is. See what I'm saying? Is it useful? Now we'll talk about the eyebrow and all the components. All right, so we have eyebrow. We have what I'd call the proper headline. We have the deck and then we have the box. Whoops, I done messed up now. Oh, I really messed up. My pen's all haywire. I think I pushed a button I shouldn't have pushed. All right, cool. Hopefully that fixed it. Please fix it. Okay, yeah. When we got down here, quote box. All right, so we talk about the eyebrow, how I'm 10xing my open rates useful right useful 10xing my open rates check the unique plug and play email method that skyrockets opens again it's the same promise no matter what market you're in then we just have like an actual picture of results this isn't even something that i necessarily like say we should do i think this was just something like it came out of a meeting like between us our ads guy john Mori, and i think maybe tyler like we sort of came to the conclusion, like let's show a result here. And then we had this quote box. I think the quote box is also another thing to take note of. Let me show you something really quick. Finally, a way to get massive email open rates that actually works. Kyle making a $50 million copy chief. So notice 
I'm 10xing my open rates, skyrockets opens, and then massive email open rates. Notice that the promise is consistent. Notice that it's the same promise. And notice how I'm solving one problem. I'm gonna make some of y'all blush. You're gonna feel silly, but I bet you, you've written a headline where you tried to address four or five different sorts of problems or markets in your headline. And so that's not what you wanna do. You want to address one problem. Tyler says, I say it goes for email. Yeah, you wanna address one problem and say, you have that solution. You have it on lock, it's covered. And anyone with that problem, even a little bit, is gonna be like, yeah, that's the problem that I have. Fix that, Alex says, similar to one thread. Yeah, exactly. Solve one problem, go after one thing. Getting a little bit of audio stuff going on here. Okay, yeah, so just take note of that. That even in my eyebrow, in the deck copy, and in the quote box, I'm identifying and solving, or claiming to have a solution for one problem. My emails aren't getting open. See that? I think something else that I want to point out about the quote box is notice it's me. <laughs> like, I'm the quote box. All right. I think that's important because then you see that, again, you don't have to have like this Hail Mary, Haymaker piece of proof from the most authoritative thing. You don't have to have the most unique and over clever mechanism title. I think, again, what I was trying to point out here is that internal trend jacking is just quirky enough. And then it's very direct with the promise. You guys often overthink copy and you try too hard to write copy and write good copy. Or no, I'm using air quotes for anyone who's radioing me in and just listening to audio. I'm using air quotes for writing good copy instead of just a accomplishing what that section of copy is supposed to accomplish and just checking that box. But Kyle, I don't want to sound like anyone. I don't know what that means. You got to sound like somebody, don't you? Is it ultra specific? I would say, yeah, it's ultra specific because we have all these results here. And I would say it's ultra specific in the fact that it's addressing one problem. Is it urgent? Not necessarily. I think the most urgency would be if this is like an urgent problem for you. I would just say we don't necessarily address that like why now but things like we're skyrocketing opens 10xing my open rates there's a bit of FOMO behind that all right so that's the headline moving on boop, boop, boop. all right cool I like this question we just got actually I don't want to sound like every other copywriter you said don't overcomplicate it but how do you make yourself unique than another you don't you stop doing that shit stop it do you know the most worn out phrase for introducing a problem on earth it is it's not your fault i i i met mike palmer in baltimore we were talking about me joining as a copy chief over there at the market wise companies and we talked copy we talked processes and we talked systems and we talked things that we liked and things that we didn't like and he told me he hates that expression he hates that line he's so tired of it it's not your fault it's so cliche but it works so stop this originality bullshit your job is to get results he hates it but uses it fuck yeah why wouldn't he it's like a car salesman saying like i hate using this sales script the one that everybody makes all the sales with who gives a shit if you hate it that's not your job your job isn't to be original and and write purple prose and 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 flowery dancy copy your job is to get the sale okay <laughs> Doc said, would you rather be original or be rich with what works? As long as it converts, Alex says. What do you think about Ben's subtle emails then? Ben has his own sort of game going on. And also, another thing is, there was a time, okay, one time I wrote these very provocative emails that was, I was kind of just seeing what would happen. I wrote some really dirty emails, like really adult X-rated emails, and I sent them to the whole list. <laughs> and I... I remember like one time Tyler was coaching somebody and Tyler said something along the lines of like, and it's funny because he just walked away from his computer, he just texted me. And he told the writer on on the, on the project, he said, Kyle was able to take a, a story about his whiskey dick and turn it into a copy squad light pitch. I can do that. I can do it. And also I actually did sell copy squad memberships with that email. What I teach you guys is the lowest common denominator for success. 
Meaning if you started today and you had no clue what to do, I teach you what you need to know the fundamentals. All right. Over time, you'll find ways and new, you'll get bored and you'll try new things. But for now, there are certain things that are just like tried and true. Why risk it? You're trying to get sales, trying to get results, trying to establish yourself, trying to make money. So you asked me what I think about uh, Ben Settle's emails. Ben Settle has absolute privilege to do whatever he wants with his emails because he knows he tracks just like any direct response person. Does this make sales? I'm going to keep doing it. And if it's, if it's something he can sit down and do every day and it's easy for him and it makes sales, that's what matters. And I'm sure he understands the triggers that he's pushing or he's gotten so automatic with it. He doesn't even consider it anymore. He just does it, which, which will happen over time. That's why I call it the language of sales and persuasion. Okay. So it looks like this is a picture. It looks like this is not a text-based PDF. I can't really highlight this, but that's fine. You can kind of tell by the way it renders and the fact that I can't highlight anything. So let's go over this and we'll use the Beats framework, which I follow here, even though it's not a big idea promo. Like if you look at this promo, this promo is a mechanism driven promo. There's no like big idea and there's not much of a force to nature. So let's talk about act one the lead and the question here is what's in it for me some of you absolutely fail to address this you're too timid you don't want to over promise you don't want to spend too much time being too hypey you just are you just insecure you got to tell them that you have something amazing and that it's the best thing ever you got to get rid of that that insecurity around that i mean if you want to make sales so we're going to do a pattern interrupt. We're going to trigger BS. We're going to drop some cred. We're going to demo results. All right, so let's see how I do this. Today, I'm going to share with you the single most effective strategy I've ever seen for creating wildly high open rates from your email list. Right away, direct, right? So do you know what's in it for me as soon as I hook your attention? Again, I am very, very, very directly going after this problem for people. Wildly high open rates from your email list. All right, and then we've got the single most effective strategy, right? The one single most effective strategy. That's my mechanism. So right there, right out of the gate, we've got our, our promise. I'm talking about, so I'm also going to move into my trigger BS section. So some people misinterpret trigger, trigger BS as a line. It's a, like a line of copy, it's not like six lines of copy it's an introduction of the promise and a ramping up and a twisting of the knife and deeper and deeper you go so my bs section is always i'm trying to make you skeptical and i'm trying to be cocky with it that's when i talk about you can't be insecure with this shit i'm trying to be cocky like in almost every endeavor confidence is sexy confidence is attractive confidence is magnetic it causes people to stop and look. And you got to have that in your trigger BS section. You have to lay it on thick. All right. So let's talk about and have a gander at how your boy shows his stuff. I'm talking about a powerful email method. Something else, the rule of one. You'll notice that I keep the mechanism top of mind. Powerful email method that requires little to no creative brain power from its users but get your email list rapidly responding and opening your emails like crazy. Again, notice the first two lines. I only say the mechanism delivers the result, and then I repeat the mechanism delivers the result, resulting in more folk reading your emails, more click-through traffic, more sales for each email you send every single day, all from the exact same amount of emails you're already sending out. I call it internal trend jacking. So here we go, we got the mechanism revealed which it was revealed in the uh headline all right so and after six years what do you think is happening here and after six years right away can someone just drop it in the chat just so i know y'all are paying attention what's happening what are we transitioning to how would you know cred that's right laura thanks very much how do you know how do you know we're, we're transitioning to cred here what would you say you gave it away blood sweat and tears it's not even that complicated it's actually just the fact that i 
I mentioned my experience. All right. So trigger BS, cred, then demo. After six years of writing email copy and sales promotions for some of the biggest direct response companies in the world. You see, that's just cred. Six years at the biggest. The most time, not the most time, but like I've been doing this for years at the highest levels. I can tell you I've not seen anything simpler or easier at improving email open rates on command. All right, this goes back to what I tell you. This is important shit. I tell you guys this and I see people never do it. What is the question in act one? What's in it for me? And I will see people write entire sections. They'll write the pattern interrupt and not mention what's in it for me. Then they'll write the one line for trigger BS. It's completely inverted. And then they'll go into cred. I worked at this place. I went to this school. I've got all these degrees and certifications and I'm really a credible source. But the question is what's in it for me? And if you look at the way that I write this, isn't every single line for the reader, every single fucking line, because we're in the lead, all right? I have not seen anything simpler, easier, improving email open rates on command. Notice Nesby at play, if you're paying attention. Simpler, easier, on command, all right? When you plug this system, that's another sort of easy, all you do is plug it in. When you plug this system into your email marketing, you don't have to dream up or brainstorm new gimmicks, unique selling propositions, hooks, mechanisms, or anything like that. Easy, 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 easy. Because the strategy literally handles all that for you. Easy. In fact, when you see just how simple this method is, I am certain you're going to love it. All about the reader, the reader, the reader, the reader, what's in it for you, what's in it for you. I, I mean, I don't even need to use the yellow because every line should have yellow. Every line is what's in it for the reader. It isn't about segmenting harder. You don't have to send any more or any less emails and you don't have to cull a massive portion of your email list. You don't have to do any of that stuff. Easy, you don't have to do that. In reality, all that stuff is just manipulating the numbers. Band-Aid solutions, vanity metrics to make it look like your emails are getting opened more aka garbage all right instead the internal trend jacking strategy will automatically make people more excited to open your e the emails you already send into your email list so this is my hint of a force in nature is that it's a way to get people excited so they open your emails i don't know if i ever address this in the copy but this is the first mention of the force of nature what the mechanism taps into and then notice right here to open the emails there's the result here it is here's our first complete unique promise okay let me define unique promise a unique promise is defined by the copy squad a unique promise as defined by the copy squad is the mechanism taps into the force of nature to deliver a result why we call it a unique promise is because in order to orchestrate that promise, not a big promise, right? I'm not gonna say, I'll get you 10,000 times more email opens. We do say that, but that's a big promise that anyone can say. And therefore it is not unique. It's only unique once I introduce a mechanism and a force of nature to the equation. At that point, I've got an and, and, and function. This mechanism and this force of nature and this result, unique. It's be hard for someone to completely one-to-one -one replicate that. Internal trend jacking makes people excited and they open your emails. That's the unique promise. So you can send as many or as few emails you want to as many or as few people as you want. I think this is also important because that force of nature handles an objection. This idea of like, well, what if I burn out the list? Oh, I mean, all right. Because when it comes to getting emails open in any market, no matter how crowded or saturated, internal trend jacking just works. So now we have a little bit of a mixture occurring. If this is all credibility, also notice how much of the cred section is sort of just like this one hit. And then I sort of make take it right back to the, the mechanism delivering a result and making your life easier. I actually called this cred. This was like my cred pieces, these, these not statements, and then this vanity metrics. Like as I'm explaining to you how garbage they are, I took that as cred, as authority. I'm telling you, forget this stuff. I'm the boss, right? So that also plays into cred here. Oh, come on. All right, cool. See, Kyle knows best. 
meaning I'm the authority, I'm cred. We have the promise, golden lasso, and then I think you could kind of call this. So this is a, there's a bit of more cred happening here. We actually go into a full blown cred section. Yeah. I think what I do is I take the cred, I sort of roll it right into the demo results with the results shocked to me. So a lot of my quote, quote demo results section is just promise. I actually don't even have results to show here. I don't show them until later. This would be act two. Very short letter. It's only 11 pages. And that includes the offer. All right. How is this possible? All right. Internal transjacking just works. This strategy was born out of necessity. Years ago, my copy squad business was getting terrible open rates. So again, right here, we know we're going into a discovery story. We know this is the cred section. As low as 6%. How shameful that a professional copywriter's own list wasn't opening his emails. Especially considering I've written for virtually every big publisher in the most saturated markets known to man, financial publishing. Just a few of the businesses Copy Squad has written for us even more today. In that crowded market, in hyper-competitive market, my copy and emails have generated tens of millions in sales, in some cases just from one promotion. Over 51,000 sales my first year. So this is my Agora record behind me here. Alex says, so cred is like authority, sort of. It's, yeah. You should listen to me is what it says. And yet, so look, I want you guys to pay attention to, I'm using like this damaging admission, whatever, fuck, whatever you want to call it, to slip in all of these cred pieces. So the actual cred is being slipped in here, right? I have done this. And here is like, when someone says I worked on Wall Street, that's what I'm doing here. I worked in the highest levels at the hardest places. And here's my cred role of all the people that I've worked with. And I call it a crowded and hyper competitive market. And then boom, more cred. Even in that market, my copy and emails have generated millions, tens of millions of sales and from just one promotion. And yet my emails weren't getting opened by my own list. So notice how I got my three pieces of cred in here, right? These are many pieces, but notice the different sort of Hey, Laura said it. One, two, three, get the fuck out. Exactly. I do one, two, three, move on. Now I'm back to it. My emails weren't getting opened by my own list at first. So I need to transition to the discovery. I blamed it on all the swipers and funnel hackers who blindly signed up to our list. They must not be really engaged. Then I decided it was because too many of our emails were going to spam. It must be deliverability. But after a long look at my emails, I realized it wasn't either of those. We simply had not implemented a reliable and repeatable strategy for getting our emails opened every single time. All right. So here's like common woes or excuses that people might make. That's all this is. It's relatable. All right. We simply have not implement, implemented a reliable strategy. This was embarrassing. I pride myself on my systems, my copy frameworks. Oh, here comes some more cred. My copy frameworks have been praised by legends like Todd Brown. Jack or John Ford, John Benson, David Deutsch, and Mike Palmer. Getting my own emails open, there was no system. All right, so yeah, just some cred pieces of me and the guys. It was all just, you know what we should have done? We should have, I wonder if we could have gotten a snippet of when Ford called me a top copywriter. Could have put that screenshot of that. But getting my own emails open, there was no system. It was all willy-nilly. And my results, they were all willy-nilly. I was not treating my own business as marketing the same way I treated my clients' marketing. I tried some traditional, okay. So I, this is, this is the blood, sweat and tears and notice how simple it is. Again, you guys overcomplicate this stuff. I tried some traditional methods, but didn't have any success with surveying my list or writing stories in my emails. I even tried going edgy. I wrote emails that were really, really outrageous and scandalous. That was an interesting time. So I decided to try a few different unconventional methods of my own design. Most, almost all of them didn't work with the exception of one. It turned out that by targeting higher open rates, I had discovered a system I could use over and over again to get my list excited about every one of my emails. Okay, there it is again, the force of nature reappearing. In financial publishing, I would sell the shit out of getting your list excited. I would say it's the number one thing. If you don't do this, all hell will break loose. Like it's, a number one, muy importante. In this mechanism-driven marketing promo, I'm not gonna focus on it so much. But I want you to just take a look at this story, right? 
and the, the way it unfolded and the way that I slipped all this credibility in there. It's one long narrative. This is something else that, well, as you get better, you can turn, you can, you can write a whole story and get all these pieces in and make it seem like, how did all that happen? But you got to sort of focus on that, like, one, two, three, get the fuck out, like Laura said. So anyway, years ago, 6%, I've worked for all these people. Oh, my God, we didn't have a system. That's crazy because I'm the man, and everybody knows I'm the man, and they've all given my systems props. I just found another way to sort of squeeze in these cred pieces. And then I'm just like, well, here's what I tried. I tried this, I tried that. And even here, it's sort of like one, two, three, get out. I tried surveying, I tried stories, I tried edgy emails, one, two, three. Then I tried different unconventional methods. Almost all of them didn't work but one, all right? So I tried surveying, stories, and going edgy, one, two, three. And it was completely plug and play. That meant I didn't need, so look what I'm doing here. I'm gonna begin describing the system and I'm describing it in terms of results and benefits. Alex says, will I be sharing this marked up doc? Yeah. Shamika says, at the end of the call, can you tell us why the readers get excited as the F forge the nature? Because it's positioned as, if you could do this, people will open your emails. If you could get your readers excited, everyone would open your emails. And then you say, well, how do I get my readers excited? Oh, I got this mechanism. It's called internal trend jacking. It's all about positioning. When, then, Ori says, yeah. Okay. So I'm describing the system. It was completely plug and play. I didn't need extra work on my email copy, no list manipulation, no cutting back on my marketing sins. Once I plugged my new internal trend jacking system into my email marketing, I began to enjoy consistent higher open rates on all my emails. Notice again how consistently I remind the reader the mechanism delivers the result. Then the magic happened with the, all right, so this is, this is what I would call results shocked me. So this is a properly written cred section. It goes from, hey, you know, I didn't write like, hey, my name's Kyle Milligan or anything like that. You got your cred with like the sort of like the resume pieces at the start. And then I bring the strategy in and some social proof pieces. So we've got, you know, this sort of like this difficult period. And this, I mean, this is what I would call, I mean, I kind of layer in discovery story. Like this is what's tough about my writing is it's, I've kind of gotten to a place where I can blend sections pretty smoothly. But yeah, in here, there's the cred with my resume, there's the discovery story with the system, and then we flow right through social proof and into, you know, blood, sweat, and tears as part of the discovery. And then, like, this is the discovery. And then we have the result shocked me. Once you discover the thing, everything changes. With the massive increase in email opens, my clicks increased. With my increased clicks, more people saw my sales pages. With more page views, sales steadily followed suit. So this was like whenever we started doing basically these automations and internal trend jacking on the list, you know, we were making like a couple hundred, couple thousand dollars and then boom, doc ass. Does discovery mean the same as answering how is this possible as a part of act two? I guess it's a good question because that brings me to the six sided die. How is this possible doesn't have one answer. How is this possible can have multiple answers, which usually focus around the discovery of the mechanism, revealing the force of nature, and why now? All of that's part of the how is this possible. All of that folds into the timeliness of it and where it came from. That's what you want to know when you answer how is this possible. So there's our little result from our Stripe account. Boop, made some money. Once I implemented internal trend jacking, my little side hustle, email list went from a couple thousand to over six figures a year. Okay. Notice this is actually the first time that I tie the mechanism to a financial result. So that's not the problem I'm solving for. It's a byproduct of solving this problem, but the problem I'm solving for is email opens. So of course, I kept doubling down on internal trend jacking, implementing it in every campaign we'd already set up and our new ones. Suddenly, all of our email campaigns were working. My little side hustle, no, because it's a little, was it supposed to be a caption? I think this was supposed to be a caption, and it's a subhead. My little side hustle email list went from blah, 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 to making six, th six figures a year. Internal trend jacking was the only change I made. I didn't run paid ads at that time. I actually stopped making regular YouTube videos. So here I'm handling, like, won't work for me, right? That's all I'm doing. Because once I show the result, I know 
their wimpy little hamster wheels are going to start running and they're going to say, no, it's because you're special. It's because you're Kyle Millian. You have a YouTube channel. It's of so I'm just going to start handling common objections. And I think a better way to think of this, because when you, when you put your little copywriter hat on, you, and I say handle objections, you're going to, for some reason, you're going to start thinking about it in this really weird formal way. You're not going to think about it like a normal person. But if I say handle those bitch-ass excuses and limiting beliefs, you'll all of a sudden start thinking with the correct voice. No, this won't work for me because my list is only this, or I don't have a YouTuber. You probably ran paid ads. You know, all that stupid little bitch-ass shit. So don't think about handling objections here. Think more like handling excuses. Didn't run paid ads. I haven't been making YouTube content for like two years. And even when I did make YouTube content, it was like sort of like me just live streaming from my car. I've never been a good YouTuber. And I write fewer emails today than ever. This is all true. So if you're saying like, yeah, you probably wrote a bunch of new emails. No, nope, I don't do that either. We have automations that just run. And Dark Souls Challenge sometimes provides new emails if they hit the benchmark. When I do put out fresh emails, even though they were all written to sell something, guess what? Thanks to internal trend jacking, they get open. So look here. Thanks to internal trend jacking, the mechanism, they get opened. So something I want us to revisit. You can take this now. We're on page four. Where's the zoom out? Doc says one, two, three. Right. Yeah. If you all right, let's let's pause right there on that comment, and then I'll do the next thing. Look at the cadence. I'm always writing in a three cadence. You say you're funny as hell. How can I not like you? Literally, lol. Thank you. I appreciate that. Again, if you look at this, this is the claim. One, two, three. And then I get out of there. I start making my transition out of that section. One of the most common ways, like once I make my point, revisit the promise. Okay. So, but thanks for calling that out, Doc. The one, two, three. I'm always writing in threes. But if you look at the page, look at on this one page, thanks to internal trend jacking, six figures a year. Internal trend jacking, they get opened. Internal trend jacking, consistent higher open rates. Turned out by targeting higher open rates, I discovered a system that could get my list excited. So this is the big, unique promise. This is the, t the full promise in this box. Why am I showing you this? Because some of y'all make your promise once. Maybe you do it every four or five pages. How many times does Kyle make his promise? Here, 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 here. That's one page. How many times have I made the same promise? Do you do that? I would argue that one of the reasons you do not is because you don't know what your promise is. That's why I say our unique promise is the mechanism taps into a force of nature to deliver a result. Some of y'all have four of each. You got six results. It'll get you higher open rates, and that'll mean it'll get you higher click-throughs too, and you could use it for your headlines, and you could use it for subject lines, and you could use it for your landing pages. Ain't nobody asking for that shit. I want to talk to someone who wants help getting higher email open rates. They know that's a problem. They know it would help them. I can help them with that problem. You see, one result. Some of y'all be like, well, the first thing is I got this A number one super mechanism system. All right. But hey, no, that's not all. I've also got mechanism system number two. First, you do number one and then you get result one. But then also, don't forget, this is a bundle complicated ass pitch. Here's mechanism two for even a second result. Y'all don't do that shit. I mean, y'all do that shit, but fucking stop, all right? One mechanism, one force of nature, one result, all right? And that's why it's so easy for me to retie everything back together and make the same promise. I've said before, you should be able to drop your promise arbitrarily, random, at any point on your page in your sales letter and it makes sense. I should be able to copy and paste it boop, and just drop it somewhere. And it will always make sense because all the copy supports one mechanism, one force in nature, and one promise of results. Okay, all right. So I got some people who are blushing, people covering their faces, and Docs is the first I've heard of that yet. <laughs> exactly. All right, so we'll come down here. All right, thanks to internal trend jacking, they get open. And so one of the things here, we're talking data. I don't love this. 
talking data points, open rates going from like 6% to 70% or whatever. I don't love using numbers that much. I like show as much as possible. So we've got this little screen grab from our spreadsheet of some of our top open rates. This has actually been filtered out because some of them were like 100%, but it wasn't internal trend jacking emails, they were fulfillment emails. So this is like some of our marketing emails. We moved from 6% open rates to over 50% on some sends. It's almost a full 10X on opens, all on marketing emails, no value or nurture emails. So this is a weird bone that I wanted to pick with people. I don't know why. Like, I think I saw the 77 and I was like, people are gonna say it's not a marketing email. I was like, I just thought of every bitch ass excuse, every limp dick whiny sort of like, oh, it won't work for me or you're cheating. Like I thought of every single thing someone could think of and they were like, I knew it. Someone's gonna say it's a value email and, and my content can get open, but my marketing emails don't get open or something like that. And I was like, not value or nurture emails. That last point is very important. I do not send value emails ever. <laughs> I really don't. If I send an email, it's with the intent to sell something. Unless, of course, it is required to fulfill a paid product or service that someone signed up for. There, I just wanted to like get that off my chest. Doc says, would it have been more powerful to show a before and after versus tell them? I don't know. Maybe. I guess what I was highlighting here is it was difficult for me to sort of performatively show open rates improving, right? Demonstrably. Chinadu says, on some sense, does it have anything to do with legal? Nope. I would say, I mean, legal compliance oftentimes is just synonymous for being honest, right? <laughs> so I'm just like saying like all of our sends aren't over 50%. You guys in the Dark Souls challenge know that we don't get opens of 50% on all sends. I think our benchmark is like, what, 27% open rate? Like that's a minimum that we want to take. So we do want to have... A certain standard but i think that that minimum is something around 25 27 percent something like that but some do go even higher like we showed a bunch that are over 60 percent so i think we are going to start sending more youtube links again or something like that that would actually be a value email yet i still enjoy open rates that people would drool over for their content and value sends yeah i'm really just picking a fight here because the internal trend jacking strategy let's see get that purple out is not about increasing engagement by writing denser emails or giving away free value. I don't want you, I don't want to use a strategy that creates more work or more tire kickers who just want free value. And I'm sure you don't either. Getting higher open rates by giving stuff away for free simply isn't the solution. This I do believe. How to leave mountains of money on the table. Okay. I think, I'm not sure what section of copy I would call this right now. Let's just kind of move through it. I think this is sort of like some force of nature stuff. I'm not sure. The money is in the list. Your list is your business. But the reality is your open rate is the doorway to your list riches. The open rate of your list determines the value of your list. Okay, so I'm really, really, really equating you need to have opens to have money. Like I'm, I'm saying that you need to solve this open rate problem. Everything begins with your open rates. If they don't open your email, they don't have a chance to click. They don't have a chance to see your offer. They don't even have a chance to buy. It. Oh, this is just a super problem. Okay, this is a super problem. And this is, again, it's a really short letter. I'm like just, just fucking jamming through these sections. So, okay, we know it's a super problem because right here, everything begins with your opens. Open rate determines the value of your list. The problem is going to be if you got low opens and everything else fails. So let's define super problem. These words that I use for the beats are deliberate. Super problem isn't just like some term that I came up with to make it better than a problem. The super problem is solve this and all your other problems vanish. That's why it's the super problem. It's the meta problem that if I would fix this, I'll make a dating analogy. The pickup lines that you use, it isn't the clothes that you're wearing, it isn't the money in your bank account or the car that you drive. It's your confidence. If you had really high confidence, you would come across more charming and attractive and all that other stuff wouldn't matter. See, that's the key. All that other stuff wouldn't matter. That's a super problem. Problem is you lack confidence. Problem is you're insecure. They can smell it on you. And so therefore you're repulsive. So if I can frame whatever it is as all that other stuff doesn't matter. That is a super problem. 
all that other stuff doesn't matter. And you can see me doing this when I say everything begins with your opens. If you can solve your opens, all that other stuff doesn't matter. All that other stuff gets better. You see what I'm saying? Does everyone get this? This is important. This is why your problem sec sections probably suck. It has to sort of be this thing. Like, oh, if only you did this, all these other things wouldn't matter. Let me hear from you if you if this makes sense or if, if I need to explain it differently. All right, makes sense. Cool. Yeah. So here we go. And if you think about the meta of where we are in the promo, like going from top to bottom, we got our lead where we identified what's in it for me. We get our cred section beginning here, act two. And then what happens after a cred section? The problem section. So that's the flow, right? When you go into act two A, you're either gonna open with the problem or you're gonna open with the cred. And then the other one comes next. It's, it's problem and, and cred. Those two come back to back. So that's all I'm doing here. I'm just following standard protocol. All right, the money is in the list. The list is your business. Your open rate is a doorway to your list riches. The open rate of your list determines the value of your list. Everything begins with your open rates. If people don't open your email, they don't have a chance to click. They don't have a chance to see your offer. They don't even have a chance to buy. The fact is, if you're getting 10, 15, or 20% open rates, that means 80 to 90% of your list doesn't even have the chance to consider giving you money. 80 to 90% of your list of your business is an automatic no on all your offers. That means you are not collecting 80 to 90% of your money. Imagine, this is a little layman's demonstration, right? This is probably, you could almost call this proof. Imagine you own a fast food restaurant and every time you made $100, your cashier threw $80 in the trash. Would you allow this to continue? Would you just go about your business happy with the fact that you were making some money even though you weren't getting all that you should no that's why i say if you have unoptimized open rates don't you dare spend another dime or another minute on anything else not only is it the simplest way to double and triple your business but if your open rates aren't optimized if you are basically throwing out 80 percent of your potential revenue nothing else can move your business to its full potential. Not your traffic source, not your marketing model, not how amazing your product is, not your price point, none of it. All right, so that's the end of that. Here's how, okay, so here. This means we're moving into Act 2B. I wonder if we even have an Act 2B. Oh, I think we sliced it. Oh yeah, I had it and it just, it was just, it just wasn't good. All right, so there's no Act 2B. I had a little sort of Act 2B where I sort of teased the mechanism and it was just like people, when they got to this point, I shared, okay, that's another thing. How many of you guys are sharing your copy? People who read the copy when it was in the draft phase were like, I don't really need to see all this. When I was trying to like sort of do my little act to be how the mechanism works. They were like, I'm ready to, I'm sold. I want it. It solves my open problems. I believe you give it to me. And so I just chopped that entire section out. Kill your darlings. Like just, just, we're trying to make a sale here doesn't matter all right so this would actually become act three which is how can i get started that's your offer all right introducing the internal trend jacking system all right and this is actually where i hand off the copy to zan this is all offer so it's about 50 percent offer the copy sort of not fully 50 percent a lot of there's a lot of images and pictures and stuff here but say 45 Doc says, could you have put a buy button at that point and kept Act 2B? No. The Act 2B was just, it was just kind of boring. It just wasn't exciting. It was ex it was too close to explaining. You can unlock the full internal trend jacking method in the next few minutes. I'm including exclusive training videos to ensure your quick and easy application of the system. Important for you to note that we sold, I think this was an edit we made during one of our review calls, that the first time Zan wrote this, it said, something like internal trend jacking trainings and then it said like i got these trainings for you and i no we don't want to sell trainings we don't want to sell education we want to sell tools templates and frameworks tools templates and frameworks will include i mean it is training videos but we don't want to position it as an education we want to, we want to position it as a system right 
you can unlock the full method in just minutes. And I've also included training videos. This page is the only place on earth. All right, so for folks who understand how our offer structures and, and methodology works, we've sort of introduced the product way earlier, but you know, here's like your USB. Once you dive in, because this is the only place, you can find a step-by-step -step blueprint to put in this work inside your own business. Once you dive in the materials, you'll have single most effective thing for getting your emails open, even in the most crowded or saturated markets. Doc says, so tools, templates, and frameworks offer solutions, but trainings offer education. Is that the thought process? Yeah, I think that's a pretty good way to look at it. Like, do you do I want to make the customer solve that problem? Do I want to solve that problem for them? Or do I want to make them smarter or better at solving the problem? Or better at a, a craft or a this or that? Uh, Shamika says training sounds like work. It's not just that. I think that's too simple. I think it's that training means, yes, it does. That is correct. It does sound like work. The problem's still unresolved and unsolved. I've only empowered you to now do the work and go solve the problem. That's not what people want. People want to pay and the problem goes away. I've had a bunch of people, I think this has come up before in other discussions of people who spend, I think it was with Devin when we did our, our call together. Devin talked about these people who would pay $3,000 to join a, like a copy community or something like that. And they just assumed they would start getting clients and all their problems would go away because they spent so much money. And it's ironic, that's just, that's just how it works. Like you think, well, I paid this much, I'm gonna get all my problems fixed. So a lot of people sort of equate, and I've heard this too, people say that Copy Squad is way underpriced and it seems, it seems too cheap. It's like, Doc says, I saw that in Business Network International, paid my fees so the growth is free. What's Business Network International? Yeah, but anyway, I guess the point I'm trying to make here is they went through problem solved. I'm sorry, I got on a weird tangent. Creating this system has taken me almost an entire decade of in the trenches direct response marketing. I've sent over 18 million emails just inside my own business, not to mention my clients who have lists with hundreds of thousands of names, send as many as one, e 1 million emails per day. So we can sort of look at this as these are sort of like cred pieces, but also notice the cadence, right? A decade. 18 million, 1 million. 18 million in my business, 1 million per day. An auto guy expected 23 cars sold per month after joining. Uh, and this is the most effective method I've ever seen for getting your emails open today. Again, most effective method, and it solves the one problem. All right, guys, we've got some cool testimonials here from within the Discord. Grab your thing and get these free bonuses. This is something else. See it. something else when it comes to transitioning and bonuses and stuff like that. You guys probably overcomplicate this as well. Just it's and and wait, there's more, right? Like that kind of stuff. Like it, it just I got hey, I got plus I got some free bonuses. Like you guys are probably throat clearing as I call it, where you're just writing and writing and writing and you're like, why am I babbling so much? Why is there six lines of just me? saying nothing or you do like these weird long summaries of the shit you just said it's like right, you already wrote that just transition just say okay i'm done with this one two three get the fuck out one two three and this is the best thing ever get it now and get these bonuses see what i'm saying like quit quit complicating these things all right so we borrowed this structure and format from todd's sin offer protocol page we broke down the sin offer protocol page inside the copy squad, so the marked up PDF should be in your in your swipe file. But yeah, we took that same structure, and so what we're going to do here is try to do a problem, solution, and then position our bonus as the solution. And you're going to see there should be a tapering off of copy, creating momentum, meaning that each section should get a little shorter. So bonus one, your shortcut to high-performing subject lines. Subject line templates to get higher opens in minutes. This is what we call more of the same. There's three. So I've heard this across many different places, but I think one one of the people that I would credit hearing it to is Justin Goff. You can do more of the same, done for you, or solve the next problem. Pretty sure those are the three. So this is more of the same. We're talking about get higher opens. One, I would give you subject subject line templates. Getting more sales. Even in a crowded, saturated market is never a problem when the majority of your list is opening your emails. Internal trend jacking has allowed us to quickly ramp up our business 
by nearly 10xing our highest open raise. All right, see again. I mean, just always keeping, I say, keep the main thing the main thing. And over our journey, we've curated some of the hottest subject line structures to get us most clicks over and over again, help you fast track your journey to sky high open rates by leveraging battle test subject line templates that are proven to get results inside this special bonus. So again, talk about problem and solution. This is kind of set up as getting what you want is never a problem if you have this solution. Just a little bit of, a little bit reversed on that. Inside the special bonus, you'll find subject line templates. You can virtually copy and paste, calls out target audience, positions your company as authority, leverages forgotten email technique, personalizes your brand, makes the reader believe. So again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, plus so much more. So it's three, three, and then plus more. Get the fuck out. I think this is something too. I think whenever me and Zan were working on this, if I remember correctly, I believe I cut a bunch of shit down here. I was like, just get the fuck out. Like we did it. We sold it. Stop. Get out. Then we're done talking about it. All in all, you get 25 proven subject line templates. Alex said so constantly talk about how it can help the reader solve their problems. Yeah. I mean, that's what we're here to do. We're, we're here to offer them something that will solve their problems. We're not here to be clever writers. We're not here to do unique, amazing, personalized bullshit. We're here to sell a thing that are nine words or less, each of which you can use right now to start watching. Open rate soar, right? Look at the yellow, guys. Can you do this in your copy? Can you point to how often you remind them of the promise and how you can fix that problem? All you have to do is plug in your details and hit send. Get this free. Opening sentence swipe file. Copy and paste these opening lines to get the click. Getting your emails opened is one thing, but getting that hard earned click is a different battle. Inside this bonus, 27 the exact word for word sentences you can use in the very first line without coming off spammy or desperate. No more wondering, just swipe these ready to deploy lines. And whether you're targeting existing customers or unconverted leads with these conversion crushing opening lines, you get the prospect to lean in ignite the burning desire in their minds to dive into more whatever you're selling that way your webinar blah 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 can make the sale and skyrocket your bottom line okay so again one two three four five six and seven so notice here we clip a little this after this other stuff afterwards and i'm not sure if this is shorter copy but again the idea here is to create a feeling of momentum first two are fairly comparable so we got here one, two, three, four, five, six, plus so much more and so much more. Make them click. All right, so here we go. We got the subject line templates, opening line templates, and then this, this, when I made this bonus, I was like, shit, this should have been a whole separate product. Like this bonus was ridiculous. I spent a couple hours just making this. Okay, now that you're getting your emails open more than, so you can even see the setup here, solve the next problem and your readers are leaning in from your very first lines, the more you can force your readers to click right now, the faster your business grows. So if you notice, each of these bonuses sort of progresses. Like I give you subject line templates and then opening line templates, and now get them to click with urgency. What if your offer is evergreen? These are common things that we get asked, or I've seen it and we've experienced it at Copy Squad. What if your offer is evergreen? What if you don't wanna use fake scarcity or phony deadline dates? Most of our clients sell information, digital products, and so do we. So this is a common issue many of our clients face, and we have figured it out for them and for our own business. So there's a problem solution inside this must have bonus. We hand you the powerful triggers, to instantly amplify urgency and drive sales without using fake deadlines or high pressure countdown timers. So this again, this is like, what if I can't use timers or deadlines or scarcity numbers? How to compel prospects to want your product, how to position your product, how to leverage extremely slam, extremely powerful slam shut technique, how to flip the FOMO coin. I'm trying to think of when, what that, what that secret is. <laughs> All right. And what it takes to inject real stakes into your readers' minds, plus so much more. This is the single best tool to create urgency and scarcity in every email you send, even if your product is completely evergreen without using a single deadline date countdown timer or limiting quantities aka phony scarcity numbers this is just such a good bonus and i think we did a good job driving that point home of what it offers people i just think this is i personally have a lot of pride in that one and so much more so then we got the guarantee right i forgot to mark all those up so obviously let's go back just a little bit obviously these are bonus number one two three 
as denoted by the fact it says literally bonus number one two and three but got sort of this is like more of the same and done for you right it's getting emails opened i would even say it's like hold on let's do this i would even say that it's more of the same result specifically done for you i know there's gonna be people that get to this markup page and be like what's dfy i'm gonna say it i bet they're gonna have the same question about blood sweat and tears too done for you all right now we come down here <clears throat> get them to read the thing next solve the next problem see that all right those are the bonuses how they stack on each other guarantee section classic i don't just i don't want you to just to be satisfied i want you to be beaming with excitement so here's something copy squads iron clad money back guarantee 100 satisfaction i say this all the time name the guarantee i'm pretty sure tyler said we didn't name this and i was like we call it the iron clad money back guarantee i know it's just an adjective in front of money back guarantee but it matters don't just call it a money back guarantee just put some fucking word there give it a name put an adjective before the word money back guarantee just don't call it just a guarantee just don't another thing to do is the guarantee badge so what we do here is this is a common little thing one thing else that you can do is you can put like my picture in the corner with a signature of mine that's also like builds trust. So the badge is authoritative. It builds trust. A picture of me would build trust. And the signature is like, I personally endorse this guarantee, right? Like those kinds of things are important. Here, a little bit of probably need to capitalize that why. But we say email Tyler here, right? Also personalization. If you're not 100% satisfied, email the real person, right? So that sort of thing, again, builds trust. Plus, you'll receive updates on this product for life. One of the things that I've thought about a lot is stop releasing new products and just go back to old products and just update them with all my new knowledge. That's knowledge. That's something I've kind of always wanted to do, especially with automatic copy, which is the second info product I ever wrote, I ever made. So I don't know. But yeah, lifetime updates, something I've always wanted to do. That means when you're rest assured, we're discovering new cool angles and strategies. We did do that with Tyler's templates. Tyler's templates got a boost. It like we doubled all the templates. We just added twice as many, or we doubled up what we had. So that means you can rest sure if we discover new angle strategies, higher you can get even higher open rates with internal trend tracking. Yeah, even higher open rates with mechanism. Again, even here in the offer, when we know what we're talking about, we've said it a million times, we still bring it back. Higher open rates with the mechanism, right? All of this stuff is benefit driven copy. Like the, the bonuses is like, here's all the cool stuff you can get, but just notice how we still bring it right back home. We'll update and include those in the product for you. Absolutely free. If you love internal trend jacking during the first 30 days, I know it's only going to get even better from here. To sum it all up, you guaranteed to receive complete money back on this sweet ass fam shot. We got these two badges, get the little check marks, total value. Only $67. You're getting this at a 97, 90% discount. So we got, you know, we're not properly doing, or we don't, I wouldn't say properly. We're not doing the whole anchor adjust. This is the anchor and this is the sale price. Let's see what we do in the copy below. It's been a while since I've read this. So you get a full, so boom, minimize price. Remember the vast majority of the names on your list are not reading your emails right now. Every day that goes by, you're throwing away 80, 90% of your list potential another day of leaving money on the table so just urgency here internal trend jacking is the secret weapon is the secret weapon that will finally tap into those missed sales for you it has taken me 18 million emails a decade of in the trenches experience to deliver this to you you can have it for pennies on the dollar don't let another day go by we're not collecting the money grab it now it watches your open rates soar Oops, I didn't mean to go purple. Your clicks increase and your sales skyrocket. You're going to absolutely love it. Love Kyle. Peace out, copy squad, Kyle Milligan. Okay, so <clears throat> this is just urgency. It's somewhat similar to the crossroads close. Like, it's almost like do this or else. Except we didn't set it up as the clear choice one, choice two. All right, what's the PS got for us? I know what it should have. Let's see what it has. In case you jump to the bottom like I would, here's the deal. If you want to skyrocket your open rates... So there it is. No matter where they are right now, some more folks read your emails, click through your sales page, and ultimately buy what you're selling. 
so that you can make more sales from every email you send, then you need to get your hands on internal trend jacking right now. Secret weapon, took me almost a decade and 18 million sent emails. Plug and play system, make your email stand out in the most crowded markets. So again, there's a tease at the force of nature, which we never really address. And get your subscribers eager to open and devour every word. In this system, you're getting everything I use to 10x my opens for a fraction of the value, 67 bucks, no catch, no gimmicks. Not signing up for a trial or some monthly program or anything like that. One-time purchase, plain and simple. Either love this bundle 100% and the guarantee. Does everything and 100% in everything it does for your business for our fund every penny. You can keep access to the $381 free bonuses in my gift to you. So we got the guarantee, we've got the price, and we've got the promise. So I want to break this apart a little bit more. Let's talk about this promise thing. You have results, mechanism, force of nature. All right, that's all the promise. Here's the result. Then you need to get this mechanism because it taps into this force of nature. This is what I was looking for when I said I know what should be in the PS. And the PS should have the result the mechanism, the force of nature. And then you get the price and a guarantee. Alrighty then. Any questions? Anybody want to drop their notes? For what they learned today? Tell me, tell me, tell me. We're all done. One letter in one call. A rare feat. It's only 11 pages. Lots of graphics. It's basically a four page letter. Alex said, so after signature, it's like a summary sort of, yes, it is. You shouldn't be dropping all this new information in the PS. Basically, you're assuming they just went straight to the bottom, and so you want to be able to condense everything you wanted them to see. Shinadu says there's no catalyst. That is true. There is no catalyst. Lots of notes done. Yeah, I would say something else to sort of take away from this is how basic it is. It hits like the core beats, right? It's got your lead and cred, you know, with all the discovery story, results shot me, and then the super problem, and then straight to the offer. It, it doesn't really have a lot of those other pieces, but it gets the job done. And again, the AOV here, I forget what it is. It's over a hundred bucks. It's a sixty-seven dollar product. Our AOV was like a hundred and ten dollars. So we're getting bumps and upsells, and again, it's performing at the level you would want. This kind of product in this kind of market this this specific niche how you'd want it to be fun all right so let's see laura says promise should be in each piece of the headline it should be immediate and obvious super problem solve this and all other problems disappear or he says i like the way you presented the cred as a means to make the prospect of you failing unlikely allowed you to insert cred without sounding like a douche yeah yeah unique is more important than useful alex said don't sell the training sell the system or framework yes constantly and consistently reminder mechanism solves problem shamika said stop using one-liners for promise force of nature etc thread throughout all right oh alex this is a good one think of every excuse and dismiss or answer them right so there's going to be quote quote objections but again, when I think when people start thinking in terms of objections, I don't know, just like a weird word. Like nobody thinks about objections. It just doesn't, it doesn't trigger in your brain, in my opinion, the right frame. The right frame is probably a whiny little bitch making excuses. A black pill guy. I don't know if you guys know red pill, black pill, blue pill. In that space, the black pill is like, if you can't find love or a relationship or a partner, it's because your looks, and it's all that matters and you can't change anything to fix your circumstances and you're completely hopeless victim and it's all predestined by genetics and it's just it's just a way to sort of resign yourself to like i'm just permanently we see this sort of stuff in the copy space when people say should i start learning copy if ai is a thing no you shouldn't no if you're worried about that then you probably shouldn't you should probably just go find something else to do but yeah so there are people that think like that so you want to start thinking of that voice whenever you're handling objections handling objections all right start thinking of these excuses think of these i'm trying to think of a good word like these people who are just resigned to be hopeless victims what would they say and then handle that and i think where we did that was when i said i'm not running paid ads i'm not doing youtube and i write fewer emails today than ever i didn't jam out like a hundred thousand emails for this all right alex thinks ai is bollocks so think in their shoes or position yeah exactly all right Thanks everyone for tuning in. I hope you guys learned a lot. Till then, peace out, copy squad.